Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Before we get going today, just a quick editorial note. The main reason we focus so frequently on the hijinks and crimes within the Archdiocese of Detroit is simple, because we are in this crooked archdiocese, and this is how business is done throughout the church. Archbishop Alan Vigneron and his unethical, homosexual-friendly staff at the Chancery are cut from the same cloth as every other diocese in the country. They all emerge from the same liberal, modernist swamp engineered to cover up and control and rob the laity blind at every possible turn. We just happen to know a lot about Detroit because we're here. But we get loads of contacts from many other dioceses saying it's the exact same here. So on to today's specifics and a startling revelation of hush money being paid. First, remember that Vigneron is the vice president of the U.S. Bishops Conference in line to be the next president. That's the normal flow of things. So that should tell you everything you need to know about the U.S. hierarchy, that they would vote in as their top guy a man persecuting a good priest. But more than that, sources tell us that the archdiocese may be about to okay an unethical hush money payoff and perhaps even illegal as well. Now, here are the details. Earlier this week, we reported about Father Edward Perone winning an arbitration hearing where a three-member panel ruled unanimously that he had been defamed by Macomb County Sheriff's Deputy Nancy LePage. Nancy LePage deliberately lied in her official report back to the archdiocese that Father Perone had sodomized an altar boy 40 years ago. Not true for the record. The altar boy, now obviously a grown man, flat out denies that ever happened. LePage not only lost, but Father Perone was awarded $125,000 in damages that LePage has to pay. Now, here's what was going on behind the scenes and where Vigneron and his archdiocese get really involved. LePage had been working under the guidance and the direction of Monsignor Michael Bugarin, the archbishop's hitman in cases like these. Bugarin does not like Perone, nor does he like his parishioners at Assumption Grotto, an orthodox traditional parish that has not fallen victim to the modernist heresy, one of the few, thanks to Father Perone, who has protected the souls of his parishioners. Bugarin engaged LePage to produce a report on Perone. She lied, along with Bugarin. That's a very important point, along with Bugarin, and bullied, both of them bullied John Doe, trying to get him to say something that never happened. When John Doe wouldn't buckle, she just stuck it in the report anyway without him knowing it, with Bugarin's full knowledge and cooperation. Bugarin filed the report, complete with its lies, and got Perone removed. He even trumpeted the removal to the international media before he showed up in the vestibule of the parish last July, passing out the official statements based on a giant lie that he helped create. Now, when Father Perone ended up suing LePage for defamation, she claimed immunity because she is a deputy with Macomb County Sheriff's Office. That argument didn't hold water and was dismissed because it was clear she was acting on her own behalf for Bugarin and not as a deputy for the county. In the official deposition of LePage for the defamation lawsuit, she admits under oath that she was acting on her own, not as a sheriff's deputy, flat out says it. So the question arose of the bills for her legal defense. Because she reported threats from the deputies' union, Macomb County agreed to use their in-house counsel for her defense. But, and this is key, word is, they refused to pay any damage awards if she lost, which, of course, is the way it should be. Why should Macomb County taxpayers foot the bill for damages because she defamed someone in her capacity as a private citizen? Well, she did lose, as we know, last Friday and owes Father Perone that $125,000, which raised the question, who was going to pay the bill? Well, by rights, she should. But once she lost, a few people with a vested interest started snooping around, and some important questions started getting asked. For example, since LePage was working under the direction of Monsignor Bugarin, why didn't her lawyers from the county file a cross-suit to have him drawn into this? She didn't act alone, so the proper legal reasoning would dictate that all those responsible should be included. 
But LePage's legal team did not go after Bugarin. Why not? And most importantly, and what Church Milton has discovered, is that a hush money deal might be in the works between LePage and the Archdiocese that it will quietly pony up the 125 grand, thereby making the case conclude and poof, go away. As one insider told us, it's like a drug deal where you buy everyone's silence to make sure the case goes nowhere. $125,000 is a drop in the bucket to Vigneron's gang. They have hundreds of millions in their endowment. And remember, they just got over $2 million more from the PPP payout money for the Wuhan virus pandemic. So cash short, the Archdiocese is definitely not. Vigneron and the Archdiocese have a great interest in making sure this case goes away as quickly as possible because the decision in the case that she defamed Father Perón greatly implicates Monsignor Bugarin as an accomplice, and actually more than an accomplice because she was taking her marching orders from him. She was under his supervision. He approved everything and was in fact present at these sessions of bullying John Doe. He participated in them, joining with LePage, according to sources close to Doe. So imagine the nervousness which gripped Vigneron and his staff when that verdict came down, that judgment, that ruling from the arbitration panel came down. They don't want any of this known any more than it is because this is how unscrupulous wicked men deal in the shadows. But also important to note, the money Vigneron would be approving to be shelled out on behalf of LePage would be coming from the pockets of faithful Catholics. There's a question being asked by insiders familiar with all of this double dealing, if the AOD secretly paying the damage award for LePage would even be legal. So here's a blindingly clear example of why every single bishop and archbishop in the country should have to be completely transparent about their finances. If they're not, do not trust them. They get to abuse the faith, not to mention the goodwill of faithful Catholics, by hiding all the money and the transactions from your curious eyes. And they abuse their sacred office in the process. If Macomb County taxpayers shouldn't pay for her loss, which they shouldn't, why in Hades should faithful Catholics in the archdiocese pay for it? How can this not be illegal? And considering the motive, it's certainly sinful. Vigneron has no intention of accepting the truth and reinstating Father Perón. Even now, at this very minute, he's continuing to pay canon lawyers and legal counsel to have Father Perón sanctioned by Rome, sanctioned in a case built on a lie that he knows all about. So, what's a little hush money to keep things moving along? God love you. I'm Michael Voris.